Now that you've tried it out, let's solve this system. So we want to decide which variable do we want to eliminate. And we look at the x's, we have 3 and 6, and that's pretty easy. We could make 3 into 6 by multiplying this one by 2, or we can also make the, the 1y into a negative 3y, and so in order to do that, we would multiply the top by negative 3. So multiply the top by negative 3 because we want to be able to eliminate the y's. So this would become negative 9x minus 3y equals negative 33. So make sure to distribute to every single term. Then the bottom one, we just go ahead and write it as it is. So 6x plus 3y equals 24. So the y values eliminate, which is what we wanted. Negative 9 plus 6 is a negative 3x. And negative 33 plus 24, that is a negative 9. So divide by negative 3. And so x equals a positive 3. Now that we have the x value, we can plug it into one of the equations. Plug it into one of the original ones. So for example here, that one has smaller numbers, so I would plug it into there. 3 times 3 plus y equals 11. So 9 plus y equals 11. Subtract 9 from both sides. And so we get y equals 2. So our solution, where these cross, is at 3 comma 2. So let's go ahead and check our solution here. Let's do a check. So we're going to plug it into the first equation, 3x plus y equals 11. So this is x, this is y. So 3 times 3 plus 2, does that equal 11? Yes. 3 plus 3 is 9 plus 2 equals 11. So 11 equals 11. So, so far, so good. Let's plug it into the other one. 6x plus 3y equals 24. So 6 times 3 plus 3 times 2, does that equal 24? 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 times 2 is 6 equal 24, and yes, 24 equals 24, so this is true. So this is, in fact, our solution. Now, let's look at another example. Here, we had to multiply one equation in order to make it work. Now, looking at this next example, we have 2x plus 3y equals negative 3, 3x plus 4y equals negative 2. Now, looking at this, I look at my x values, 2x and 3x. Well, uh, they're not factors of each other, so that's not quite fast. And then we look at the next one, 3y and 4y. Well, they're not factors of each other either. So, we could make it work, though. So, before we multiply by one equation, and notice up here, it says multiply by both equations. So, that's what we're going to have to do. Now, take a look at it, and you want to evaluate which one would be the best one to work with to eliminate first. I always take a look at the values that are the smallest. So 3 and 2 versus 4 and 3. So in this case, I would go ahead and eliminate my x values. Sometimes the best way to do it is just to multiply them to each other. So 2 times 3 would make me would make 6, right? 2 times 3 would be 6x. And then 3x times 2 would be 6x as well, right? So I just take this 2, multiply it to the bottom one, and I take the 3 and multiply it to the top. Now, of course, the only thing is that they need to be opposite signs. So you're just going to have to multiply 1 by a negative. So let's see. The top one, let's go ahead and multiply that by a negative 3. Then the bottom will go ahead and multiply by a negative or a positive 2. So let's do the top equation first. So here, so this is negative 6x minus 9y equals positive 9. Then we multiply the bottom one. 2 times 3x is positive 6x. 2 times 4y is a positive 8y equals. 2 times negative 2 equals a negative 4. Now, now, if we add them together, a variable will eliminate. So the x's elimi eliminate. We have negative 9y plus 8y. That equals a negative 1y equals 5. 
Now the y has to be positive, so we divide by negative 1. Therefore, our y equals negative 5. So, now that we've done that, let's clean this up a little bit, let's go ahead and substitute into one of the equations so that way we can solve for the other variable. So I'll substitute it in the first one. 2x plus 3 times negative 5 equals negative 3. So 2x minus 15 equals negative 3. Add 15 to both sides. Therefore, 2x equals 12. Divided by 2, so x equals 6. Okay, so we get 6 comma negative 5. Now, let's go ahead and plug it into the equation. Check our answers. I'll always do a check. So let's plug it into the bottom one first. 3 times 6 plus 4 times negative 5. Is that going to equal negative 2? So 6 times 3 is 18 minus 20. Does that equal negative 2? 18 minus 20 is negative 2, so negative 2 equals negative 2. This is true. So, so far looking good. So we plugged it into equation 2, and that's fine. Now let's plug the x and y into the first equation. 2 times x, which is 6, plus 3 times the y value, which is negative 5. Does that equal negative 3? So 6 times 2 is 12, and then 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Does that equal negative 3? And yes, negative 3 equals negative 3. So therefore, we are done. So you can go ahead and try this next equation here. And, and you'll see the answer at the bottom and also in my notes. And when you want to do this, I would probably say that when you look at the 7 and the 5 versus the y values, here are the x's versus the y values, think about which one would be the best one to eliminate. Now for me, I would choose the y values because I only have to multiply the top, okay, so if this is 3, then I'm going to multiply by the bottom I'm by 2, okay, so 2 times 3 is negative 6, and then I would multiply the bottom one by a, let's say, a negative 3, because 3 times negative 2 would be a positive 6, right? Now that's nicer than trying to eliminate the x's where I would have to multiply the top by 5, because 7 times 5 is 35, so that means I need the bottom one to be a negative 35x. So I do that by multiplying the bottom by negative 7. So that's okay to do, but then you're looking at 7 times 15 and 5 times 19, which is a lot more higher numbers, right? Which makes it maybe a little more difficult. So try this with eliminating the y values.